and the life everlasting. Amen. God, we pray for your Holy Spirit on this Pentecost Sunday to remind us of that, of that flame that enlivens us and, and helps us to, to grow in your love through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. All right. I'm going to have all the kids come up here in the front row. Even the ones that are tucked out there, you come on up here. Anybody else hiding back out there? No? All right. We are going to open up. With, oh, oh, yeah, go past the chancel on the floor. <laughs> We're going to be opening up with singing Freedom. So I know the bulletin said, I thank God, but uh, I was praying, and the Holy Spirit just led me in my heart to change the song to Freedom. So last minute change in the bulletin, so I apologize about that, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to clap our hands out and before we're going to jump and shout and we're going to spin and we're going to sing and we're going to praise our God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's start this Pentecost Sunday off with a shout of triumph. No more chains, no more bondage, I am free. 
I want to sing a little louder than before. I want to spend a little wilder than before. I want to shout a little louder than before. Freedom, freedom, we sing. the joy because of our freedom through Jesus Christ as we turn to our neighbor and extend the right hand of fellowship. This is a uh, this is graduation Sunday, and uh, Leon, if you and the, the graduates who are here, if they'll come up, that's um, Drew, that's you, and that's um, Sarah. I invite you to come up, and then um, Mark's Mark's going to come up. Oh, I always get a little turned around up here. You guys, come, we're going to read a couple things. Great, come on up over here. We, we, uh, we're always excited about this and what's going on, so. We're gonna read the ones we have and then we're gonna, then I'm gonna turn it over to Leon. Okay. So our first graduate is Jesse Weaver Paxton. <clears throat> he is the son of Margaret Weaver and Mark Paxton and this is what they wrote about their son. Our son, Jesse Weaver Paxton, is graduating May 18th, that was yesterday, from Georgetown University with a Master of Arts in Asian Studies with concentrations in politics and security and history, society, and culture. During his graduate studies, he served as an assistant editor of the Georgetown Journal of Asian Affairs and as a research assistant for the Center for Security and Emerging Technology. He is currently working in Washington, D.C. in the United States State Department. And then Ella Hossettner graduated in December 2023 from uh, Republic High School and the OTC Middle College. In January, she began work at Cox South as patient safety assistant to gain experience in the hospital setting for enrollment in the nursing program. In fall, she plans on using her A-plus scholarship to attend Ozark Technical Community College where she will begin a nursing program to get her LPN and we'll bridge over to get her RN with Cox College. 
Sarah Marie Love, the daughter of Bill and Kathy Love, graduated from high school in May of this year. She has been a homeschool student who loves ballet and all types of dance. She has attended Asbury all of her life and loves Camp Galilee, whether she is volunteering as a counselor or attending camp as a camper. Sarah was an American Heritage Girl and earned the highest honor of the Stars and Stripes Award. She loves to read, sing, and hang out with friends. She plans to attend Ozark Technical Community College for a year and then transfer to a university to pursue dance pedagogy and fashion marketing. She has just been hired as a dance assistant at Springfield Ballet, where she will also be attending classes. And um, Drew Pike, uh, Carol Daniels' grandson, <laughs> Yay. will graduate from Glendale High School this week. Yesterday. Y'all ready? Yes. Yesterday. 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 Yesterday, never mind. This week, this must have been let, written last week. Did you do it? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Drew had the opportunity to live and learn in many different cities and states. He, lear- he started nursery at Asbury 18, 18 years ago. From Springfield, he was able to start preschool in Germany, kindergarten, and first grade in Hawaii, second, fifth, uh, second through fifth grade in Oklahoma, uh, junior high and freshman high school year in Texas, and then back to Springfield. Over the past year, he's participated in a program at Ozark Technical Community College, exploring careers in manufacturing and engineering. At this time, he's still uncertain about what the future career will be, but is thankful for the support of his f- family and friends. No matter where he has lived, church youth groups have always been part of his life. He has enjoyed church mission trips and church camps. One of his favorite memories come from being a camp counselor at Camp Galilee. Hey, right. All right. Yeah. Um, so Leon. the youth group uh, has went ahead and um, purchased some items as gifts for our graduates. Um, Ella, which is her sister, is accepting for her. I want to have I want to have Drew come up and hit. Sarah. And on behalf of the youth department, thank you for being a part, participating. As short time that you have, you still have a little bit of time to go. And Sarah, thank you for being here from sixth grade all the way to your graduation time. So this will be your last time, would not it? For Camp Galilee. No, um, no she, 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 can go, she can go back as a counselor and then and then as a director of the camp. That's your, that's your goal. <laughs> I see that, I, I get you on that. Aspirations. So yes, thank you all. I was a pleasure being your, your youth director. So I look forward to seeing what you do next. Yes. Thank you, let's do a big hand. I do wanna, I don't, don't usually, I don't usually open the floor up to other graduates if somebody else has a graduate in their life uh, uh, that they'd like to share, I want to open that up. Yeah, here. My grandson, Peyton Marshall. Right, and where did he graduate from? Webb City. Webb City, well, congratulations. Others? Oh, yeah, great. Well, let's have a prayer. God, we are thankful uh, for educators and uh, people in administration who, who make education possible. <laughs> But mostly we're thankful for the, the people who, who enter into that program, uh, open their hearts and minds up to learn something new and, and come out of, on it the other side as a graduate. And we pray your continued blessing with them as they continue their endeavors in life, that they might always show um, love and grace and, um, and the appreciation we have uh, that we live in a place where we can, um, where we can learn new things and we can we can do new things uh, because of the grace and love you've given us through your son Jesus Christ and all God's people said 
Amen. Amen. The choir is going to sing now. Friends, we are blessed in many ways and have given many opportunities, and um, so we come to God, and we approach God with, uh, in fear and trembling is the way the Bible puts it, as we work out our salvation in fear and trembling, and one of the ways that, that we act on that love and that grace is through the generosity that the Spirit gives us, and so we bring to God our tithes and our offerings.
God, your blessings um, just flow out of us, and, and we are so thankful we can be part of this kingdom. And we bring these, our offerings, to you because um, it's their expression of our faith and, and of our appreciation for, uh, for you using us. So we pray your blessing upon these gifts, that they might be multiplied in our lives and, and through the ministry of Asbury Church. It's in your son Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. I'm going to have you sit. We've got to talk about flowers for a little bit, and then we'll do our next hymn. Uh, we had 84 geraniums ordered for this Pentecost Sunday. <laughs> that was a record. I always, when we start the flower ordering process, I think, oh, 30, 15, whatever. And so I checked about two weeks ago with Julia, and we were already at 58. And I know we hadn't ordered ours by that time, but I was thrilled when I got the final number of 84. Some of them have already left for their forever homes from the folks at the eight o'clock service, but we want all the geraniums to go to their forever homes today. So if you ordered geraniums, I have your name on a list. And that means you have already paid for them. And all you have to do is come up and tell me your name. Even though you think I may know you, I'm old and I'm a retired teacher, so that means part of my brain's retired. You'll have to look at me and say, Mark, I am, and I'll go, oh, yes, Susan, you have two. And you can pick whichever ones you want. Now, if you're sitting out there and you think, oh, I didn't order any geraniums, and they're so pretty, well, we have a few extra. They're $10 a piece. No, I don't have change. If you have a 20, just buy two, okay? <laughs> but we want them all to go home so that they can be enjoyed. Any geraniums left here uh, as of Tuesday, unless we know someone is picking them up later, will be either planted here at the church or they'll be taken to our shut-ins. But we'd like them all to go to their forever homes today. Now, here's the other big ask I have for you. If anybody has time, and can stay after service, all of the crates and ladders and things have to be taken off here in front of the altar because the table has their worship service later today. If we didn't have them, we'd just leave everything here and I would deal with it later in the week, but we can't do that. The crates, all the crates have got to go up to the attic above the sacristy. All the ladders, step ladders, all are mine and they go home, so they go out toward the parking lot. So if you have time and can help with that, we really would appreciate it. Yesterday, the geraniums were delivered at 6 a.m. 
The grower is Marion Yoder from M&M Greenhouse in Dunnegan. They also sell out at the Battlefield Mall. And so he delivers here at 6 a.m. Pastor was here, and we brought the geraniums in and lined them up in the hallway because Homeschool Orchestra was having graduation and reception in here in the fellowship hall until 6 p.m. And then at 6 p.m., nine volunteers plus me showed up, and we got everything put up uh, and set up in just about 30 minutes. It was great. So if you were a volunteer, Carol, thank you, and other volunteers that helped us, uh, we really appreciate that. Many hands make light work, and that was a prime example of that. So if you have time, after the service today, once the geraniums are out of the way, I would appreciate your help putting up the crates. Another thing I wanted to share with you is something I shared with the 8 o'clock group. Today, I realized, because I'm not going to be here next Sunday because it's Memorial Day and we have family in from out of town, that today was my last time to lead the singing at the 8 o'clock service. Because by the time I return, it'll be June 2nd, and we're going to have service at what time? 9.30. A.M., 9.30 a.m. <laughs> just, just clarify, you know, don't, don't ever assume. 9.30 a.m. on starting on June the 2nd. We're going to have coffee and donuts at 8.30 if you are so inclined. I'm working with Price Cutter right now to get that arrangement made. And we're going to start out with a step of faith and order three dozen glazed donuts. And hopefully we'll have to keep ordering more as we have more and more people come and have an informal visitation fellowship time in the fellowship hall before church at 9.30. And so I talked to the 8 o'clock service about that change because change is hard. We get very comfortable coming at a certain time, doing a certain thing, and when anything changes, feathers get ruffled. And we can adopt this change and embrace it or not. It is everybody's individualist decision if the 930 service works for you. And I was one of those people because I, you know, I am kind of a scheduled person. And I really like, you know, knowing what I'm doing and knowing it far in advance. But I decided just this last week that God does not bless us at his convenience. He didn't send Jesus when he had time. He didn't bless our lives because it was convenient for him. And so I've decided to embrace this change and choose joy. Amen. We're going to celebrate being all together because if you remember, if you came to the New Year's Eve brunch church and you took that survey, the overwhelming theme that came out of those responses is, we all want to be together. Well, God works in mysterious ways, and we are, are all going to be together. Another thing that I've decided I'm going to do, and it came to me when I got the list. Julia emails me a list of all the folks who bought geraniums, and I look at the list, and there are some names of you on here that I don't know who you are. And that's going to change. That's why you need to tell me your name today. Even though I may know you, you need to tell me your name because it bothers me that I don't know everybody that goes to this church. And I want to know who you are. So it is very easy to get ruffled feathers and say, well, I'm just not going to come to church. I'm going to go someplace else. And God bless you if you do. We want you in church somewhere. But the community of Christ is at Asbury is only as strong as everybody in these pews. And just as Pastor said, this is a perfect time to invite someone new to church, to embrace the change. We want to celebrate Tom's ministry the last Sunday of June at the Patriotic Pageant. And we want to celebrate and welcome Rachel Stone, our new pastor, the first Sunday of July with open arms and open hearts. This will be the first time she's been a lead pastor and she'll be nervous, and we'll be nervous because she's new, and we don't know anything about her. I've not met her. I've only heard good things about her, and the most reassuring recommendation I got was from our former pastor, Melissa Dodd. Melissa is going with me on my group that I take to New York in June, and she was here at a meeting for the tour group, 
And she said, Mark, you will love Rachel Stone. And I hope I do. Because I think the future of this church depends on that. And I think it depends on every to be here in the community of Christ. So I'm going to choose joy. I'm going to embrace this change. It is not going to bother me one bit. If church is at 8.30 and I'm coffee donuts are at 8.30, I'll be here and I'll bring the donuts to make sure we have them. And then church will be at 9.30, Sunday school at 10.45. So that's, that's going to be my decision and I hope you will enjoy and join me in that. Amen? Amen. All right, let's stand and sing. I love thy kingdom, Lord. What a perfect hymn to sing as we embrace this new change. Here we go. scripture reading this morning comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 7, and then 12 and 13. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. It's a Pentecost. Uh, it's considered by most, uh, one of the things we talk about is the birthday of the church. This event is the, uh, the birth or the initiation of the, the church that, uh, of, of Jesus sending the, the, the God sending the Spirit on all of us and to go forth. We've been lighting the Christ candle uh, from Christmas up until Pentecost. And now uh, we go out from here. The candle won't be on the, uh, on the altar any anymore um, because the light is inside us is what we do it, it, and and the 
the light is important. The flame is important. It goes all the way back in the Bible to Moses. You remember Moses. He's important. Ten Commandments. That is a pretty good movie. You may remember from the movie. It, it, it kind of, the, the most important parts start when he, he's wandering in the wilderness. He's been kicked out of, uh, out of Egypt. And, uh, and he marries a Midianite. And, and he, he's tending his father-in-law's sheep. And he comes across a burning bush. I mean, it, uh, it burning flames, and, that's, and, and he encounters God. And, and that's when the mission starts. Go back, go back to Pharaoh and say, let my people go. And, and there's lots of things that go on there, but eventually they do come out of Egypt. And they're guided by a pillar of smoke and fire. Not only guided, but they're protected. You've seen the movie, you know the story. The important part is God is there. And, and God is guiding them in this wilderness experience. And they come to the mountain where the Ten Commandments, and, and the flames are on the mountain, and God is, uh, is on the mountain. And, and afterwards, uh, they get the Ten Commandments. They have all these, uh, they have the staff of Moses that, that sprouted, and they, they, need, they have manna, and they decide we need to put this someplace. And they put it in, a, uh, they put it in the ark. And they build a tabernacle around the ark. And the, the power of God descends upon it. The, the flames and the smoke descend upon it. That's where they are. And he's wondering. And they think, oh, this can't be it. We're not quite to where we're supposed to be yet. And so there's that, that excitement that goes on and on until they get to the promised land. And they start, start, uh, start, start establishing themselves in the promised land. Saul comes along and... And, and kind of forms them into a, into a country. They need, we need organization. We need a king, is what they say to Samuel. And so he, uh, he, he becomes a king, and, and his son David then establishes Jerusalem. About 1,000 1, years before Christ, he establishes Jerusalem. And he brings that Ark of the Covenant in and that flame of God in it still is appearing. And it's his son, Solomon, who builds the whole temple. Says we need a permanent place for God and builds the temple where people can come and worship God, where the, the nations can come and see where God is on earth. And at the dedication of it, that, that flame descends. It works out pretty well for, for the next you know, 400 and some odd years. But the Assyrians come and, and they kind of ravage the northern kingdom and uh, destroy the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. They come pretty close to, but God saves them through a miracle. And then, and then in 586, the Babylonians, Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians show up and they sack Jerusalem. They destroy the temple. That vision that had been there, that thing that they held on to, had been destroyed. What are they going to do? They're going into exile in Babylon. Somehow they need to put it all back together. It's because of their sinfulness, because they didn't, they didn't do what they were supposed to do. They weren't, weren't listening to God, and it's, it serves as a warning to all of us, right? If we're not listening to God, and we go through this, we need to learn what we're supposed to do and what we're supposed to be. That's what this power of God is supposed to, supposed to be doing. And here, here we are. Here we are, and, and, and it's a, a priest. It's a priest, somebody from the priestly class, Ezra, who gets favor with the new king, King Cyrus. And the new says, send me back to Jerusalem. Let me rebuild the temple and we'll offer, we'll make offerings for you. And he sends Cyrus back or sends Ezra Cyrus sends Ezra back and the place is just rubble and he starts to organize and to rebuild the temple it's 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 not what people remember there the, the flames and the fire just aren't there they're starting to offer the sacrifices but it's it's just not the same it doesn't have that same power or oomph and, and, he, and, he, and he starts to crack down a little bit on people and then it's a few years later where they say, what we really need is some organization. And so Nehemiah, you can read about it in the two books, Ezra and Nehemiah. 
Nehemiah says, what we need, what we need is a governor. We need some more organization here. And he comes and he, he's going to build walls and make a city and organize people and kind of get people to follow the rules and everything. But it's just not the same. If it just doesn't look the same, it just doesn't feel the same, everybody's a little disappointed. The flame seems to be going out, but they, they endure. They endure for 400 more years. And then Herod, this is the, the Romans are taken over. And they appoint Herod, one uh, Jewish, he was sort of Jewish, you know, kind of a, a different kind of Jewish, but he takes over and Herod, Herod in 20 before, 20, the year 20 before Christ, BC, Herod just says, we're going to renovate the temple. We're going to make it. And Herod's temple is amazing. This is the temple that's around when Jesus is there. And the giant stones and an amazing piece of architecture. One of the wonders of the world, Herod's temple is. This is called, uh, this, this is the, the, uh, the, the, the second temple period once Herod reestablishes it. And it's beautiful, but it's Jesus who comes and says, well, look. Uh, soon, not even one of these stones will be on top of the others. Jesus is prophesying even more destruction because the fire isn't there. And it's not about the excitement there. That's not what it is. It's about, it's about some experience. It's about something is still missing. And it's Jesus who, when he's baptized, has that, that, uh, that dove descending on him. And the, the words of, of his father saying, this is my beloved son, that point to what's going to happen next. And Jesus, Jesus goes up to Jerusalem, and they're all thinking, oh, this is it. He's going to call the armies, and the angels are going to come down, and we're going to kick the Romans out. But instead, he's arrested and crucified. And everybody's thinking, are we next? And they're hiding out. And that's when Jesus appears to them and says, look. There's more to this. You need to dedicate yourself to prayer. And that's, and, and, and that's what they're doing for 40 days. Prayer and fasting, prayer and fasting, and dedication for 50, day, 50 days, uh, for 40 days. And then Jesus ascended. They watched Jesus ascend. And then 10 days later, they're in that upper room praying. And something happened. The second chapter of Acts happens. And that's what we want to talk about today. Bow in prayer with me, would you? As God, we're thankful for your love and your grace. And as we explore your word and your way, come into our hearts and change us so that we might be disciples of your son, Jesus Christ. It's in his name we pray. Amen. What is, here, here's this question through the Old Testament. Questions through the New Testament. Questions for us today. What does God want us to do? What does God want us to be? And it's right here. It, it, it kind of it, it lays itself out for us. Here in, in the second chapter of Acts. It starts off, when the day at Pentecost had come, they were all, what was it? They were all, what does it say? Together. They're in one place. That's, that's been the vision. This is... God starts exactly who we are, just exactly where we are. They're together in one place. That They're in Jerusalem. They're close to the temple. But here's the thing. There's the thing. God wants us to gather. That's what God wants us to do. First of all, God wants us to, to gather. God wants us to be together. That's how we grow is, is in coming together with brothers and sisters. But that isn't, we don't gather to be an end in and of itself, but we gather in order to, to, to do more. They're gathering together, not just, and they're praying, and they're fasting, not just for the experience of praying and fasting, but that something amazing happens. And the, and the a Holy Spirit comes upon them and descends upon them like flames of tongues, Right? They're filled with the Holy, that, that flame that they've been missing from Moses all the way, all the way up until the temple that's not in the temple now because the temple has become a place, an object, a thing. 
It's become something that people use to exclude people instead of include them. He said all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. That, 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 that flame from the temple descended upon all the people. No longer was, was it a priestly class of people, but it was everybody had the Holy Spirit. Everybody could speak like God. Everybody was given this chance to find God and to experience God's love and grace, and that, that fire that burns within us. And they began to speak in other languages. It isn't just about people coming to us and learning how we talk, but it's about them going out and learning how everybody, God goes where people are and approaches people and loves people just exactly who they are, where they are, just as the Spirit gave them ability. Oh, Pentecost is the best graduation Sunday, the best thing to talk about, because you go to school, and you, you go to school to learn, yeah, and to take the tests and everything, but you don't learn just for the sake of learning. You learn so that you can do something more, be something more. And that's what they're doing here. To, to learn to grow and to be something more. We, God wants us to gather and God wants us to grow, friends. To grow spiritually for our, our, our soul to be put back together and to be the kind of people that God wants us to be. And then finally, everybody's looking at it. You can't help it once it's happened. You can't help but everybody noticing there's something different. And they're all amazed and a little confused. They're like, these people are weird. You know, that's the way we put that. That would be the modern translations. They were amazed and thought everybody was strange. And they said to each other, what they say? Read it with me. They said, read it, because this is the question we ask. They said, what? What does this mean? We're back there again. What does this mean? God works, and we're all like, what in the world does it mean? Well, I'll tell you what it means. God, doesn't, God didn't give us a gift for us to hoard it or to keep it from others, but to share it with others. God wants us to gather. God wants us to grow and God wants us to go. Go out in the world, show love, show grace, invite others in. Invite others into that same experience, not necessarily to a place, but to the experience of God so that they can gather, they can grow, and they can be one of God's chosen people too. It is graduation Sunday. Pentecost is the birthday of a church. And this birthday isn't just about us coming together and being who we are. It's about God giving us the resources to change the world. You don't go to school just for the sake of going to school. You go to school to make a difference in the world. That's what the education is about, and that's what we celebrate. Our goal is to become disciples of Jesus Christ. Some people, other, some people have the goal of making more money. Some people have the goal of changing the world, making their community a better place. The best thing is we don't go alone. We go with the power of the Holy Spirit who connects us to each other. And that's what we're all about. Now, that's not easy. And so one of the best resources we have is prayer. So every time we do a prayer, you'll see the prayer list up on the screen. Because we pray for others as well as for ourselves. So I'm going to lead us in pastoral prayer. At the end of the pastoral prayer, I'll begin praying the Lord's Prayer. I invite you to join with me. After the prayer, the praise band is going to lead us in a song. You're welcome to come and kneel at the altar if you're led by God to do that. Oh God. Hear our prayer.
you are ever more ready to hear than we are to even ask. But we come here asking for your spirit to descend upon us that once again we might experience that flame of, of life and of joy and of growth. Now we come confessing our sins, knowing that we haven't always done the things we ought to have done and sometimes done things we shouldn't have. Sometimes we've been counterproductive in what we've done and how we've done it. So we throw ourselves on the mercy of your son, Jesus Christ, who came as a representative of you, who sent us the Holy Spirit, who died on the cross for our sins and loves us just exactly who we are and where we are. Now, we have many issues in our lives. Some of us need physical healing. Some of us need um, emotional healing. Some of us are lost in our stress and our depression of the age. We, we get too caught up in the issues that are around us instead of what's really focusing on what's important, which is loving those around us and loving you. Sometimes we get distracted by our financial needs or by relationships that don't seem to be going the way we think they ought to. So we give ourselves to you the one who can perform miracles in our lives, who can make us what we ought to be, and show us the way, that truth, and that life. So we come this morning giving thanks for the graduates, the people who've endured, who've received the certificates. We're thankful for their teachers and instructors their families of support, whether they be related or, or outside of their communities that have made that education possible. We pray that they might continue on in a way that really does make the world a better place. And we pray that we can continue to support the good things that happen in this world, that we continue to be open to your spirit and not let the dryness of the season sit, but that we can find that new life in your spirit and in your hope, because we want to be disciples of your son, Jesus Christ. We want to be people who pray with our whole heart and our whole life, the prayer that your son, Jesus Christ, taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. We're going to close out with singing a song called Set of By Ruth. It's Pentecost Sunday, and this song's about how we want the Holy Spirit to set a fire in our soul, a fire that we can't contain and we can't control. And we're going to go ahead and sing this song, and we're just going to press into worship, and we're just going to seek our Heavenly Father. Amen? Amen. Amen.
that I can't contain, that I can't control. Cause I want more of you, God. Cause I want more of you, God. Sing it again. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. Cause I want more of you. I want more of you, God. Friends, that fire in your soul can't help but to make you grow in love and peace and kindness. If you can just listen to God and hear what God's doing, then you'll grow in that love. And here's the amazing thing. Then what happens is you're participating in God's wor work to reach, reach out to love and concern with the world. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. 